Hello Games just announced their new game Light No Fire at the Game Awards and they brought a trailer and info. This game looks like it has serious potential and in some ways appears to be a No Man's Sky 2.0. It looks like they've taken everything they've learned including all the flashy tech added to No Man's Sky and made this beautiful new world. The info so far is pretty decent, we know what type of game it is as well as the rough scope of the game. Light No Fire is as you could expect another sandbox, but instead of a few hundred galaxies or with billions of star systems, it is a single planet, a really big, bigger than Earth planet. It's also fully multiplayer, everyone is on this one planet. With how they work, this won't be a giant server world you have to join like a normal MMO, this will be more like No Man's Sky multiplayer. It's too big for them to have loaded on a server. The planet is procedurally generated as of course they are working with what they know. This brings some concerns of a lack of depth, but other than keeping our imaginations in check, the only way we'll truly know the depth is from playing. Hopefully HG will host some kind of preview event. On the subject of its release, there is no release date yet, this is purely the announcement trailer. There is a Steam page already up for Light No Fire, but nothing was mentioned for its release. But as they've only had a team of 12 people working on this for several years, it looks to be in a remarkably good state. The last thing we want to do is bully them into rushing their magnum opus out. From the trailer we saw an absolutely beautiful view from a rather high mountain, an epic lake with maybe connections to an ocean, cliffs, far off trees with surprisingly good detail. The first thing that hits is just the fidelity. It looks like No Man's Sky graphics with a thought to be impossible level of optimization and landscape crafting. Sean mentioned just before they played the trailer that there are mountains miles high, way bigger than Everest suggesting a great move is to make your way to the top and soak in the insane views. The next shot shows a player riding a beast mount, and with what comes after, we will definitely have mounts. Another thing in this shot is the interesting waypoint or marker that looks like some kind of old tech or magic device. Whether it's this game's version of waypoints to charge your exploration, or something more, is yet to be known. As well as more beautiful, wind-blown grasses and breathtaking background landscapes. The shot after shows that this world is magical. Hello Games has done a bit of a dive into magical fantasy, with this skeleton which feels more likely to be a mob than a player, but nothing is certain just yet, other than there are of course enemies in the game, as well as ruins amongst a somewhat rotten biome that likely hide some interesting lore for the world and maybe loot. The idea of this ancient world appears to be that we have all found our way onto this planet and are exploring, as opposed to us being natives. Nothing explicitly says that, but the fact of it being a natively multiplayer open world sandbox that is yet unexplored heavily implies it. Also those red leaves look a bit like maple trees in autumn, and I love me some of that. This underwater shot is exceptionally No Man's Sky looking, with almost kelp sack and that dark green hue, but this game definitely seems to have more than No Man's Sky's oceans. We have players swimming, which at the very least confirms we can explore the waters, as well as a boat wreck, which implies but doesn't confirm boats, and a huge octopus looking sea creature. I bet they put whales in this. And there we have our first shot of a player riding a flying mount, giant epic looking mountain, and even just that singular very old tree there shows how far their procedural generation has come. It's not just a bunch of different trees random, but less so on the meta scale. This has me really hopeful for a truly refined, procedurally generated world. It wouldn't be a Hello Games trailer without some flashes revealing secrets and cool things. The first flash shows us a player with a magical looking staff racing to a floating, mystical, ancient tech looking cube and a flag. Whether this is some kind of race, maybe even set up by another player, we don't yet know. Flash 2 is exceptionally cool, we see a player using a glider. Just the thought of using a glider from a huge mountain sounds rather fun would make some amazing background video too, soaking in all the sights. Flash 3 gives us our first peek at a race of rabbit-like creatures. Clearly intelligent as it's atop a mount that looks like a huge chubby crow. Huge chubby crow mounts also confirmed. The scene after the flash is continuing the one before is where things really pick up. The first thing brought into focus is a player chopping down a tree, implying some survival elements, specifically the gathering of resources. I doubt we'll have a multi-tool in this world, but they do have axes. After that is a house being magically built, which while I hasten to not scream base building confirmed, it kind of does confirm it. 
whether this base building will require a mere workbench to work or a central base unit with distance limitations like in No Man's Sky, we don't know. But base building is fantastic. Hopefully the themes won't constrict the creativity too much and we have some real freedom in how we build. More flashes show a friggin' dragon mount, very cool, as well as confirming that boats are in fact a thing in this game, and that we can use and assumedly build them. Sailing in Valheim is a true joy, so I'm hopeful for the feeling of exploration on the open water in Light No Fire. Flash 2 shows us archers hunting with bows, which is super cool, as that along with a mage staff and axes implies a decent set of weaponry and tools to utilise through your play. Not only this, but also a river. I'm super hopeful that they've managed to figure out running water within a procedural space. Regardless of whether it has flow physics, it looks beautiful in this scene. The last flash in this set shows a player fortifying a sword with some fire magic, ready to take on a huge magical crab and its kin. So hopefully some cool fighting and not just whack till HP gone. After the second set of flashes, we see some players jump on their dragon mounts and fly over a beautifully clear lake with what looks like either ruins or I'm more inclined to think a player built structure tearing out of the water. There are also some other houses dotted around the landscape. The third set of flashes starts with a player flying very high on a dragon mount, slightly above the clouds of a storm. Being able to fly that high is a great confirmation, as well as some pretty dang cool weather effects. Flash 2 shows us the huge chubby chrome mount in flight over a beautiful landscape with some low clouds and or fog. And the last flash shows a very interesting looking landscape, no trees, lots of grass and most interesting thing, a huge mountain lake, confirming that water in this game is not confined to a specific height on the map, that alone puts it way ahead of No Man's Sky's generation. The next scene shows off the speed that these mounts can handle, which is rather fast, but the best thing in this scene is this floating lighthouse looking thing. It appears to have trees and at least a basic indoor structure, but can we build these, or just visit to find some lore, and maybe an item or two? Next scene we have a player walking with a flaming torch through a dark marshland, and another player in the background warming its hands over a fire which appears to have a cooking set upon it. I haven't seen any confirmation of food or the survival element of needing to eat. The scene then moves to focus on what looks like a semi-dormant golem, either broken or half submerged into the ground with some magical essence still present within. Next we get a good shot of a group of players riding through a desert style biome. And then a scene that appears to show the bunny race kneeling to some players as they enter what is likely settlement for them, implying that they are not playable but a native race of sorts. The scene progresses to show a large orc type NPC also. The structure design in this area is also just very cool. Then we get more speedy flying on a dragon mount, with a player wearing what appears to be an antlered helm. The trailer then closes off with the name reveal and title art, looking very reminiscent of the atlas. Whether this means that there is some greater intelligence pulling the strings, or this is yet another simulation, it's all guesswork. But after analysing this trailer, I'm pretty dang excited to see what the Hello Games team have done with all of this experience. I'm definitely excited to see how this game turns out, and my one fear is a lack of depth, but I'm also not sure I'll really care. It's all down to whether they have a solid gameplay loop to mix with the exploration and building. Exploring by walking, boat and dragon seems very cool, and with this world being as insanely big as they say, I would expect some other long distance option, maybe some sort of portal network, pure guesswork as it is now. Are you liking what they showed us? Did I miss anything? Let me know below.